Okay, continuing in the series of demos of some of these old uh, concatenative language ideas and things that I've prototyped over the years. This one is a logo that was really meant to try to teach programming to kids. Uh, so it's a regular logo with a little turtle that you move around on the screen, you know. And so some of the, these are some of the things you can do with it. You can uh, you move him forward and turn him left or right. There's some basic arithmetic for adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. Uh, there's the basic stack, you know, primitives, dupe, dupe swap, drop, dip. Uh, one of the most interesting things is the idea of quotations. So any sequence of these things can be put in parentheses, and that entire quotation can be pushed to the stack, and then there's words that use that. So repeat, for example, will take a number and a quotation from the stack, and it'll repeat that quotation that number of times. Pretty useful. Uh, let me just jump right into a demo, though, here. Shrink it up a little bit so I have some room to type. Now the way this works, it's just a uh, prototype, so I type in the text box here and it'll show the code up above. It's like I type 50 and it shows in kind of a nicer way up here. 50F and it'll show a 50 forward arrow. It, it would be nicer in the future to have like some palette of these words and you just drag them over or something like that. No typing for kids. Uh, an interesting point though is the idea of this instantly interactive system. You know, as soon as I type the F, the turtle moves. I can say 90 degrees to the right, and as soon as I type right, you can see the little arrow move, you know. And as I'm editing this program, I can just copy, paste, 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 and get a, a square, and just immediately, just as I'm typing, it's just showing me what it's doing. Um, to show off quotations, though, let's say we go back to what we had here, 50 forward, 90 right. Now I can put that in parentheses, and you can see it kind of put it inside of a gray square here to show that it's a quotation now. And it didn't move the turtle at all. Instead, the quotation is on the stack now, but I can do things like do this four times. Now that will make a square. It's a much more succinct program. Um, I can take quotations of quotations. So now we've got a uh, quotation of a quotation. And let me call that S. So you can take quotations and name them. So that's your kind of means of abstraction. Give them a name and now I can just use that name as if it were a primitive. So I can type S anytime I want and I'll get a square. In fact, I could do something like S uh, 10 to the right and S again and you'll get two squares that are 10 degrees offset from each other. In fact, I could do something like uh, S 10, 10 right, um, Actually, here's a good demo. S, 10 right, clear. So you can clear the screen as one of your steps. And let's do that a thousand times. And it's going to sit and draw a square, move 10 degrees, draw another square, clearing each time. Now this is very slow because we're showing the turtle, but if we turn that off, you can see it's actually quite fast. It's kind of nice to be able to do little animations like this. Um, what's another decent little example? The sun is kind of a cool looking one. What does it say? It says six forward, ten to the right, do that nine times, we'll call that A. Three forward, ten to the left, do that nine times, we'll call that B. And do A followed by B, and then turn 180 degrees, and do that twice, we'll call that Y. And doing Y, turning 20, 20 degrees to the right after each time, do that 18 times, and you end up with this nice little sun pattern with uh, 20 degree offset between them, 18 petals, and this interesting little pattern. And let's see what's another decent example. Even smaller little seed of a program that ends up making something kind of interesting. Uh, it's just this much code. It's very, very tiny. Uh, this is an example, though, of a quotation that takes arguments. So I think a couple of the things that make concatenative languages succinct is, for one, whenever you have arguments, you don't have to name them. So you don't have the idea of named parameters and then names being used inside the body of a function or something that you have to sit and replace now, um, you know, formal arguments with actual arguments, then go find the instances and replace that. Instead, everything's always on the stack. Any arguments that something takes is on the stack. So this is an example of a quotation that takes an argument. So first we start with a zero on the stack. Then this quotation says, push a one to the stack and do an add, which basically means increment what's on the stack. 
Okay, so I, it expects an argument. It's going to increment it. Then duplicate that, go forward that many. So it's going to start out going forward one, then 89 degrees to the right. So not 90, so we're not trying to make a square, we're trying to make it slightly offset, so it makes this interesting pattern. Do that 180 times. So it's going to go one forward, and then 89 to the right, and then two forward, and 89 to the right, and three forward, and four forward, and keeps doing that and growing out, outward as it spins around, and it makes this, this nice little pattern. And if we want, we can even use the clear screen. This is a little bit slow, actually. But uh, even if we hide the turtle here, it'll sit and paint the galaxy and then offset a little bit and paint it again, paint it again, paint it again. Sit and do that a thousand times. I think one of the most interesting, you know, or complicated ones that I've got is an animated clock. This one, it's quite a bit of code, actually. For this kind of little language. This took, I don't know how long, maybe an hour or something to come up with <laughs> to get it all right. But uh, I think I'll just go and draw the tick marks. He'll draw hour marks and draw a minute and, and uh, hour hand. And uh, or maybe that's an hour and second or a minute and second hand, I'm not sure. But uh, they're both moving actually. This one's moving slowly, but uh, it is moving. And the whole thing's animated. Um, so I said, the, the one thing that makes concatenative languages succinct is the lack of arguments, you know, lack of like formal parameters and having to map names like that and come up with names for those things. Everything just happens on the stack. Um, which means that you end up just concatenating functions together. You know, one function will do some work and leave its result on the stack and the next one will take whatever's on the stack and do something with that. You just put those two together and now you have a, a composition of those two functions without having to thread arguments through which takes a lot of syntax. Okay, so it's, there's a lot less syntax. The other thing that makes them extremely terse is whenever you find a pattern in a sequence of, of these things, you can always yank it out and give it a name and then just replace it with the name. Absolutely freely. In, absolutely any time you see a well-formed sequence of words. Okay, so you can't break quotations in half, right? A quotation is a single token. But you take any sequence of these words if you see a re repeated pattern anywhere in there, you can just take that out, give it a name, replace it with the name absolutely uh, fearlessly. You won't break anything. It's not possible to break anything. And your opportunities for doing that are pretty great. So you end up being able to refactor immensely. In fact, that, that I think is the reason for the name of the, the language factor. I think it's a great name. That's really one of the pillar benefits of uh, concatenative languages. So that's it, and that's about it for the demo. I guess the takeaways are uh, the immediate nature of an interactive environment is pretty nice. I want to keep that in any future, you know, editing environments for concatenative languages. The uh, just the terseness of the language, not just reducing things to one character tokens, but just the fact that you can do do with fewer tokens in general uh, and refactor relentlessly. Yeah, I guess the fact that you can apply a concatenative language to something that has nothing really to do with math, I guess it's doing a little bit of math here, but this is something that kids can play with and can draw flowers and galaxies and whatever they like. Um, they don't really feel like they're dealing with math. It's not like an RPM calculator or some kind of calculation engine. Um, and I guess the other point is that uh, this approach, this exact environment right here, has been put in front of children and they can pick it up. It's not that concatenative languages are some bizarre esoteric thing that only you know weird computer scientists can understand. It's completely natural. And it's especially natural to a child who has never programmed before. If this is all they're given. And they and they have this nice interactive environment where they feel like they can just try stuff and see what happens. Just as you try it, you see you see the result immediately. You can see where you're failing, you can see where things aren't doing what you want. Um, it's it's wonderful. That's about it.